Do we have maximum karma with people that are close to us? For example, our parents, our siblings, our spouses? And if yes, uh, how do we deal with them different than others? Please repeat that. I didn't get the first part of the question. Uh, do we have maximum karma hmm. with people who are close to us? Um. People, are you, are you talking about your wife? <laughs> we kept her away from you for six months so that your karma could be reduced. close to you means, not necessarily, but generally. You're always looking for somebody who thinks like you, who feels like you, who acts like you. You're looking for a double. Hmm? This double thing is a big problem. You know, during World War II, Adolf Hitler had many doubles. People who just looked just like him, they were trying to speak like, I mean they were trained to speak like him, behave like him, all mannerisms, everything. Many tyrants across the world have always tried to have doubles for a variety of reasons. This is a basic trait of a tyrant, <laughs> that you want to have a double. And because a lot of marriages are tyrannical, you're trying to have a double. <laughs> In 1944, when the World War II was uh, beginning to turn against the Third Reich. On a certain day, Himmler, who was the right-hand man of Adolf Hitler, walked into a safe house where there were eight Hitler doubles all of them looked like Hitler, they dressed like Hitler, behaved like Hitler, they have been trained for years. And everybody else who deals with them also have to behave as if he, they are Hitlers. So Heinrich Himmler walked in and said, Hail Hitlers! And said, I have good news and bad news. They all said, okay, what's the good news? The good news is, our Fura is still alive. The bad news is, he lost his left eye. And he pulled out a metal hook. Once you're a double, this is a problem, you know. <laughs> so whatever happens to the double has to happen to you. If they become miserable, you must become miserable. If you show joy on your face, you're finished <laughs> If your double is being miserable, you must also act miserable. Whether you are or not, it doesn't matter. If you show joy, then the double, you're not doing the double act properly. <laughs> so, I do not know what, from what context, 
from what understanding of karma you are asking this? People whom you believe you love and people whom you believe you hate, with both of them there is a lot of karma. You may never meet the person, they are somewhere far away, but you hate them. You definitely have lot more karma with Pakistan than Lithuania, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Because it's going on. So, karma is not because of your engagement in life with something. Karma is because of the way you deal within yourself. It is something that you're doing to yourself. It is not something that life is doing to you. It is something that you're doing to yourself. So what kind of karma you do to yourself is your choice. We were looking at this as today. If you wish, you can become joyful. If you wish, you can become miserable. You can become blissful. You can become ecstatic you can become utterly, you know, you can cause agony to yourself without any reason. It's just you. So this must be understood. Karma means action. Whose action? My action. Or in other words, this is a great insight into life that you understand your life is your making. It is your doing, it is not somebody else's doing. Only because it is your doing, only and only because it's your doing, there is room for liberation. If it was God's doing, how the hell are you going to break it? If the trap was God's trap, Creator's trap, there is no way you are going to break it because it's your doing. That is why it can be undone. After all, it's your doing. So, you can use somebody, people around you, either to break your karma, either to cause a karma of liberation or to cause a karma of bondage. Anyway, you're doing something always. You can't help that, isn't it? Physically, mentally, emotionally, energy-wise, something is happening with you all the time, awake or asleep. You cannot dodge that. If you're aware, you will cause karma of liberation. If you're unaware, you will cause the karma of bondage. You need not necessarily be married for that. <laughs> you can simply do it. Sitting alone in a room for the rest of your life, you can create karma with everybody in the world. It doesn't take anything because it's something that you're doing within yourself. It is not an interaction with somebody. It is something that is happening within you. You are like a silkworm. Silk is a beautiful fiber and a fabric. But this is like a silkworm using his own marrow. He is weaving a cocoon for himself. This cocoon is very important, it's going to kill him. If he doesn't break it someday, if he breaks it, he becomes a beautiful butterfly, free to fly. If he doesn't, he will die within the cocoon. That's all karma is. If you crack it, it becomes a source of liberation, something very beautiful will happen 
no worm can ever imagine what it means to be a butterfly, isn't it? But uh, if you die in it, then it becomes the greatest bondage because you died in your own cocoon, not somebody else's making, your own making. So, karma is not about somebody, whether close to you or far away from you, it's not about somebody, it is what you're doing within yourself. The very fundamentals of karma means it's my doing. Everything that I am is my doing. The moment you think I'm having karma because of my wife, you miss the whole point. The karma is not because of her, the karma is not because of somebody else. The karma means my doing, my action. This is my creation. The bondage is my creation. So the liberation also has to be my doing. Somebody can help you, but this is an inside job. Because it's an inside job, a little outside help is needed. But it's an inside job. You're not having karma with anybody. Karma is about you. It is your making. It is your bondage. Two people may be living together, doing many things together. One may be becoming free, another may be getting entangled. Isn't it so? Isn't it happening? They are living together, doing the same things. One is using this to get entangled, another is becoming liberated because it's your doing. If it was each other's doing, then both would be entangled. It is not so. The very word karma means it's my doing. Nobody else is involved in this business. <laughs> so, Guru, fear of failure of or fear of change gets me immobilized. How can I change it? Fear of change does what? Or fear of failure. Mm -hmm. it, it makes me immobilized. How do I change it? Immobilized? <clears throat> For one who is, you, who is seeing this life as a stepping stone, for a larger possibility, for him there is no failure. For one who is looking at the simple events of this life itself as the goal of life, for him there is failure and success. If you are just seeing this life as a stepping stone for a larger possibility, if you have a good deal, you use that for your well-being. If you have a bad deal, you use that for your well-being. The economy was on the boom, when every fool could be successful. No. <laughs> it didn't take much. When the economy is on the boom, everybody gets carried, isn't it? Now there has been a meltdown. Now it takes something else to be successful. <laughs> So, when the economy was on the boom, you could have brought a certain dispassion towards the money that's flowing in. Now the economy is down, the taps are all closed up. It's time to come, meditate, walk in the mountains. There's a lot of time. There's a lot of time on your hands, isn't it? When there was money, it took away your time and life. Now the taps are closed, lots of time, this is the time. So it doesn't matter what the hell happens. It doesn't matter what the hell happens with your life. If you are seeing this life only as a stepping stone for a larger possibility, 
then whatever the situation, it is beautiful and very useful, very, very useful. Once there was a farmer like you, who was tired of various natural factors ruling his… the quality of his uh, crop. So one day he called Shiva. It was a wild card entry. So he found excess and Shiva said, what? He said, I'm tired of all the natural nonsense happening. Obviously you're not a farmer. I know from history that you were a hunter. You were not a farmer. <laughs> you don't know what it means to farm. Why don't you leave the nature in my hands? I'm a farmer. I know when it should rain, I know when there should be sunlight, I know when there should be wind, I know what… everything. You don't know because you're just a hunter. And you're a crazy ascetic. You're definitely not a good farmer. The wrong times it's raining, at wrong times things are happening. You leave it to me. Shiva was one of those moods, he said, okay. Nature is in your hands. Then the farmer planted his crop, planted a maize crop, rain, poke the land and see, okay, it's soaked up to six inches, stop. Then plough it, plant it, wait for two days, rain, mm, sunlight. Today I am working in the field, cloud. <laughs> so everything just happened the way he wanted. A beautiful maize crop came. He was overjoyed, see, it's good. Nature should be in farmer's hands. And then when the time to harvest came, he wanted to see because none of the birds were coming, he was surprised because that also he said, no birds, no birds. Then he went and opened and saw a nice big everything, but you open and saw no grain inside. Then he thought, what the hell is this? What did I do wrong? Then he couldn't figure out because rain, water, sunshine, everything he managed properly. Then again he went back to Shiva. But he was in this condition. He waited for many years for him to open his eyes. By the time his… you know these many years, the fields and the family, everything went to… But he wanted to know the answer. What went wrong? His farmer first. Then when Shiva opened his eyes, he asked, I did everything right but there is no grain. Did you sabotage my crop? Shiva said, I've been watching. You were doing a you were in charge, so I didn't want to interfere. The rain was great, the sunshine was great, everything was fine. But you stopped all the winds. I used to always send fierce winds which would threaten your crop. But because the plants felt pushed and threatened, they put their roots deeper into the earth. So grain happened. Now you have great maize crop. No maize? So 
various situations in your life, either you can use it to make yourself stronger and better or you can sit and cry. This is the choice you have. Everything, it doesn't matter what happens. The most horrific event happened in your life, that also can be used for your growth and your well-being. If only, if you have clearly seen the small events of your life. When I say small events, I mean your business, your marriage, your children, all those big things. All these things are just a stepping stone. This is not new to you because in this culture, they put this into you for centuries, for millenniums. They told you, your life is about mukti. Your marriage, your business, your social life, these are all just means to get there. Either you go with it or you go without it. But whether you are a sannyasi or you are in the samsara, your only goal is mukti. Yes? The goal was not just for the sannyasi, for everybody it is mukti. If you can walk alone, you walk alone. You want party going with you, you walk with the party. That's your choice. You want to get there quick, you walk alone. You want to go there having picnic on the way slowly, you go with people. Choice is yours. But the important thing is, whatever the hell you're doing, there's only one goal. So if you have set this up, then all the events of life, everything is beneficial. The boom is beneficial, the meltdown is even more beneficial actually. It is also ecologically very good, you know, the meltdown. So, the fear of failure. Failure is bad enough. Fear is adding spice to it, isn't it? Success happens to you not because you desire it, because you earn it. Everybody desires it. It comes only if you're capable of it. No, no, I am very capable, but… Mm, that's the but. <laughs> I am very capable, I was doing very well five years ago, but now… Yes, but now situations have changed and you don't know how to deal with it. That's all it means. If you have set a larger goal for yourself, than just eating, breeding, earning a living. If you've set a larger goal for yourself, all these things are fine. Today you have a… what? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to torture you with reminder, a twelve-course meal. Tomorrow you have just dry bread. Both can be enjoyed, isn't it? Both can be just fine. Actually, it's good for health not to have a twelve-course meal. <laughs> it's good for the tongue, it's good for the society to have a twelve-course meal, not good for your body. A lot of people by choice, they're having a simple meal. Hmm? By choice, they're having a simple meal. If nature assists you, what is the problem? Suppose you can't afford anything else, you can always buy our Sanjivini ganji, you know. What are you laughing? It's very nutritious. And you can also buy a bottle of pickle. You can live on it for the rest of your life. Very nutritious, very good for your health. You live longer. You can even throw a Sanjeevini party. <laughs> Why not? 
I'm sure you can make that much money, isn't it? No, but I can't pay my rent, I can't pay my electricity bill. You can come and work here. Well, if you don't have a building, we'll put you in the thatch roof. At least the cow shed is there. You know, we all slept in the cow shed to start with. Today things have gotten a little better. You don't know how it'll be tomorrow, who the hell cares? When we slept in the cow shed, we were like this only. Today also we are like this only. When we were in the cow shed, we were not like this. We were like this only. Now also we are like this only. Wherever the hell we go, whatever the hell happens, this is how we will be. Because success and failure is not in the volumes of money flowing into your life. Success and failure is not dependent upon the recognition that you're finding in the world. You're successful with life if you know how to walk with joy through hell. <laughs> Meltdown is not hell, don't… <laughs> I know there is a certain amount of global warming involved, but it's not as hot as hell, not yet. It's not bad at all, it's very good. I'm sure you can do with less food, smaller house, smaller car, or walking is great, you know. Hmm? Walking is very good for health, do you know? Some man who just uh, became hundred years old in uh, Coimbatore city, I have not met the man, I read in the newspaper just a month ago, he became… he his hundredth… hundredth uh, birthday, they asked him, what is the source of your health and well-being because he's still strong and good? He said, uh, I am a walk king, you know. He put a hyphen in walking and said, I am a walk king. <laughs> because every day I walk, hundred, I'm still walking. So your f failure, could be extremely good for your well-being. Don't be against your own well-being, you know. Satyamao Ganji and walking, it's your recipe for health. <laughs> there is no such thing as failure. Failure is an idea because success is also a stupid idea. Your idea, what is success and what is failure, isn't it? Instead of trying to change the world, change your idea. Isn't it easier? If you just change your idea of success and failure, everything is great, isn't it? If you were a beggar on the street, today, if you could walk into the restaurant, eat a masala dosa and pay ten rupees bill, this would be the height, the peak of your success. Isn't it so? So, you've gotten trapped in social situations and it is not even your idea. Why am I crediting you with this? It is somebody's idea <laughs> of what is success, isn't it? Don't become a slave to somebody's idea. At least have your own idea. You have no idea of your own. Don't deceive yourself. Every idea, every thought, every emotion, every value that you have is picked up from somewhere and it rules you from within. It rules you from within. Your religion, your society, your culture has trained you to believe that this is it. So first, the first and foremost success is 
that you are not a slave to anybody's idea. This is success. Whatever the situation of life, you're alive means you're successful, isn't it? <laughs> no? Let me see it if you're successful. This is success, you're alive. You don't know the value of life. <laughs> you're crying about the share market. <laughs> you do not know the value of life. Because the damn graph is going up and down, you want to die? No, no, but I lost so much money. That is no such thing. These are all social things, these are not existential things. We created the society for our well-being, not to take our lives. Yes? You created your family, your social structure and every other damn thing for your well-being, not to take your life, isn't it? Now every damn thing can take your life. Don't make things that you create, things that human beings create larger than your life. That is the basis of your suffering. You are not interested in the Creator's creation, so magnificent. You are enamored by petty things, so you have to suffer. If you don't suffer, how? What is the value of enlightenment? <laughs> you have to suffer. If ignorance doesn't bring suffering to you, why would you seek enlightenment? What, is, what would be the value? Somebody said ignorance is bliss. They've always been selling ignorance, of course. See, I told you the power of marketing in the morning. <laughs> People have been telling you ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. You know, during the sixties, People popped LSD. Do you know what's LSD? Love, sex and drugs. <laughs> they popped LSD and they began to think they're superhuman. And they jumped off tall buildings because they believed they're going to fly. And they did fly for some time. <laughs> you know when the Wright brothers flew, they were airborne only for twenty-four seconds and that was a great feat. When I, you know when I was seventeen years of age, I built my own hang glider and I tried to fly down the hill because it was downhill, I flew I believe it looked like a long time, but I believe I could have also done something twenty seconds. But then, when you realize it is not built to fly, then the bliss is over. <laughs> I came down with two cracked ankles, but these people who jumped off buildings, they were blissful in their ignorance till you hit the ground, of course. So if ignorance does not bring suffering to you, I would be disappointed with life. I would be very disappointed. Then all my striving and who I am doesn't mean anything, it's of no significance, it's of no consequence. No. If you're in ignorance, you must suffer. This is not my wish, this is the way of life. Whether you like it or you don't like it, that's the way it happens. 
Sadhguru, all the cultures in the world, they have a common thing that they revere human life. Yes. Taking away your own life or somebody else's life is not considered proper. But if, if one is really suffering, one has got a bad deal in this life, then why can't this one, you know, start a new game, end this one and restart the game? Is there anything wrong with that? So if I have a bad deal, don't I have the right to shut it up and come back again? If you have a bad deal with your job, you could just quit. If you have a bad deal with your marriage, you could just divorce. If you have a bad deal with the society in which you live, you can come to Isha Yoga Center. <laughs> if you have a bad deal in Isha Yoga Center, you can go up the mountain. So, these are not good enough reasons for you to end the process of life. First of all, you didn't create it, so you don't talk about ending it. Unless your identity as a separate being or a separate person has, has disappeared, and you and the source of creation are just the same. If you come to that point, then you can just throw away your body consciously. Then you're allowed to do it. Not by damaging the body, not by hanging from a tree. We don't mind burying you under the tree, but hanging from a tree is neither good for you nor for the tree. We already looked at this, whether it's a good deal or a bad deal, if you have a larger purpose, everything is a stepping stone. Everything is a stepping stone for your ultimate well-being, if you have set the larger goal. Every situation that you get into, you are getting so identified and caught up with it, now it feels like it's better to end your life. <clears throat> anyway, this is lot of bull, because today something is going wrong, you want to end your life. Tomorrow morning something is going right, you want to live. You want to have your third baby. You want to get married once again. If things are going little better tomorrow morning, you'll have plans. Everything looks bleak, you think of suicide, isn't it? So this is just a game that you're playing in your mind. It once happened. A salesman, decided to go into a new development, housing development. He thought no other salesman would have still ventured yet because it's a new development. So he wanted to be the first one, be the early bird. So he went and knocked on the very first house that he saw there. A lady came and opened the door without giving her a chance, he just slipped into her house, took a lot of cow dung, fresh cow dung from his bag and threw it all over the new carpet. And he said, see I have a wonder vacuum cleaner, you watch it, I'll clean this carpet without even leaving the slightest of odor. If I don't do it, I will eat every piece of this cow dung myself. 
I will eat it. So the lady asked, would you like some tomato sauce? <laughs> because we still do not have electricity in the house. <laughs> What you need is a little bit of tomato sauce. <laughs> Tastes a little good, then you suddenly want to live. Just eating cow dung, you feel like dying. <laughs> you stood up and said, Sadhguru, if you know what you are uttering, such nonsense should not come out of your mouth. There is no meaning to Sadhguru when you are wanting to end your life. Because it's not worthwhile sitting here, that's what you're telling me. <laughs> it's not worthwhile sitting here. You're not in grace. You're somewhere about how your job is not working, how your family is freaking you, how something else is happening. That's all you're thinking about. Just be here. Suddenly it'll be worthwhile. I'll make it worthwhile. The quality of your relationship largely decides the quality of your life. Is that so? Hmm? The quality of relationships that you hold in your life largely decides the very quality of life that you live. Good deal or bad deal is not the point. The point is, is this life serving the purpose? It's human memory which is the source of all bondage. What you call as karma is just memory on different levels of life. Don't believe anything that is not yet your experience, it doesn't matter who says it. This does not mean disbelief, no, you don't know, that's all. Somebody tells you a story, 